Hey guys, so today I'm gonna be looking at more of my wrong stories. So yeah, let's just get right into the video. My in-laws are currently furious with me for hurting my brother-in-law's feelings and reputation with my friend group. Recently, my single brother-in-law, Chris, has been hinting at me to introduce him to women and I've refused. Chris has been single for almost three years and he has been having a hard time meeting women. He tried flirting with my friend, but she has been cold and non-receptive. This was my friend Grace. Grace is not interested in him due to his inability to be faithful and she wasn't physically attracted to him. He tried to flirtatiously engage with her during a small party my husband and I had last Saturday. My husband got along away to promotion so we had a little party. During the party, Grace had grown frustrated with his incessant flirting and at some point told him in no uncertain terms that she found him physically ugly and that his physical ugliness is only surpassed by the ugliness of his character. <sighs> She told him this in private, so no other guest had heard her escaping review of his personhood. I would cry if someone said this to me, bro. You're ugly, but you know what? That's not even the worst problem about you. Your ugliness is literally masked by your uglier personality. So you don't even seem that ugly because you're even uglier inside. Chris left the party. The following afternoon, while my husband and I were nursing a wicked hangover, my in-laws, to my surprise, called to scold me for having abused and embarrassed Chris. After a few minutes of us shouting back and forth on the phone, I reminded my husband that handling his family was his job. So while my husband argued with his parents, I reviewed our security cameras. And honey, Grace verbally tore him apart. Grace reminded him that he cheated and divorced his late ex-wife Lily while she was battling cancer and that he then got dumped by the mistress for being a cheater as he continued to cheat on her. Grace told him that he wasn't a man of any significant value other than the few coins he had in the bank and that there's no way in hell she'd entertain his delusions. She also said the only thing he had going for him was his overbloated job title as an executive director to a third-rate company that would probably collapse in the next five years. As a parting gift, she told him to consider some cosmetic work to improve his haggard appearance and perhaps to start praying for divine intervention to fix his rotten soul, since there is no way a psychotherapist could ever come close to fixing whatever is wrong with him. Oh my gosh. Dude. I would never want to offend Grace. Like, I want Grace on my side. My in-laws and Chris feel that I shouldn't have told my friends what Chris did because he's now perceived by my girlfriends as a terrible person. I told them he was unfortunately a terrible person and people would have found out what happened between him and the late great Lily. That's crazy. He's like, you shouldn't have told anyone I'm terrible, even that I'm terrible. <laughs> the audacity? Okay. You know what? It's right for everyone to hate him because who would like someone like that? If you knew his history, why would you date someone like that? So Chris, be ready to stay single forever. I then discussed what happened with my colleague Natasha and she said I was cruel for having told my friend group about what happened between Chris and his ex-wife because Chris had grown a lot in the past two years and didn't need to be known for the worst thing he has ever done. Natasha is dating Chris's friend, so she also knows him. I'm Natasha, you're trash too, bye. You know what? It's only the right thing to tell people that someone's a terrible person because they're a terrible person, so they can avoid that person. Because imagine not telling your friend and then they get with a terrible person, not knowing what their history, and then the terrible person ruins them or does something that makes them heartbroken, then really it is your fault for not telling your friend about him. Okay? Like, imagine doing things and then you have to suffer the consequences. <laughs> oh my god, I never thought. You're a terrible person and people know you're a terrible person and you're gonna be mad that people know that you're a terrible person. You did it to yourself though. And wah, 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 go crying to your parents about it. <laughs> That's more of a reason to not date someone like Chris. My son has been in a relationship with his girlfriend, Lily, for about three years now. I love my son and I hate to say this, but he's not turned out to be a good person. He has very little work ethic, has no desire to get a job or go to college, spends most of his time gaming or partying. Lily, on the other hand, is a polar opposite. She's very studious, has aspirations to be a doctor, is a very good swimmer, and is currently away at college. When my son and Lily first got together in high school, they were an excellent match. We loved having Lily over, and my son definitely took more care of himself. Since then, it's rapidly deteriorated. I know my son still loves Lily, but she never gives her the attention she deserves, and with her clear potential, I just feel she deserves better. When Lily came to visit a few days ago, she was visibly upset. 
When my son went to the store, I asked if she was okay, and she told me that she didn't know what to do and wondered why my son had such little ambition and was so lazy. As that's my view given, it's been ongoing for almost two years. When she asked what I do in her situation, I told her to put herself first and what she wanted. Lily thanked me and said she'd think about things. Well, earlier today, my son comes downstairs in a rage telling me that Lily had broken up with him via text. I asked him what she said and apparently the message referred to discussions with your mum and that made her rethink the relationship. My son was livid that I got in involved and said I'd overstep boundaries. I told him that I didn't advise Lily to leave him, just that she had to make her own choices and decide what was best for her. My son is now not talking to me and my husband is annoyed believing that having no Lily will make my son's rut last even longer. I also miss having Lily around. Damn! I don't think the mum did anything wrong though because Lily came to her for advice. Lily was like... I'm just upset. What should I do? And then she was like, put yourself first, honey. And that's what Lily did. Good. I mean, honestly, though, I feel like Lily didn't have to include I talk to your mum, right? She could have just been like, you're not getting your shit together, so bye. But hey, it's no one's fault that this happened. If you're a lazy person and your partner leaves you because you're a lazy person and you're not doing anything to better your own life, that's your fault. And hopefully the breakup comes as a wake-up call for you to, like, pick yourself up again. Honestly, hopefully. And what's the husband talking about? Like, if your son is a piece of trash, you should be talking to him. Because if that was like an Asian dad, <laughs> ain't no way the dad's gonna allow his son to be like that. All right, moving on. I took my brother out to eat yesterday. I tried to do this at least once or twice a month since I don't live at home anymore. The problem is when we were at the restaurant, my brother couldn't keep his eyes off of the waiter and kept stuttering when he tried to place his order. I noticed him looking at the waiter wherever he went and was even full on staring at him when he was at another table. The first time I caught him, I didn't say anything until about the third time. I decided to ask him if he was gay because I always suspected it and the way he was looking at the waiter just made me even more suspicious. However, when I asked him that, he just kind of paused, told me that he wasn't. He then asked me if he was gay, would I have a problem with it? And I told him that I wouldn't. After that, we just kind of dropped it and carried on as usual. I kind of forgot about the situation until he called me earlier today crying. He called me crying and asked why I thought he was gay and if he gives off gay vibes. I was essentially caught off guard by this and tried to calm him down and explain to him that he didn't give off that vibe. And I was just wondering, hoping that would calm him down. After a while, he stopped crying and calmed down, but kept repeating to make sure that I understood that he wasn't gay and didn't like boys. I apologized to him and told him that it wasn't my intention to offend him and I told him that I understand that he's straight. I told him that I love him either way so it wouldn't matter anyway. After that, we kind of hung up and after our conversation, I felt really bad for making him cry. He didn't show that he had a problem with it until today so it must have bothered him at the restaurant too. Was it wrong of me to ask? I mean, I definitely feel like it's wrong to ask if you guys are not close, right? But I feel like this person didn't even have like bad intentions, especially since they're siblings. Because it feels like in a way that they just wanted to support him and be there for him. Do you know what I mean? Like they had like the best intentions. But yeah, I'm pretty sure we all know that if someone is gay, they come out on their own terms. So yeah, just don't ask I guess just wait until they're ready to tell you well that's it for the video hope you guys enjoy tell me in the comments down below what your thoughts are and as always thanks for watching hope you guys liked it and I'll see you guys next time bye